Audio testing, one, two, three, lights on, camera rolling, and action. Welcome to the Scaling Creator Podcast, the one-stop shop that explores problems, solutions, and stories for business-minded creators. I'm Soren Dickens. And I'm Erickson Dickens. We'll be talking about everything from self-discovery, storytelling, leadership, marketing, sales, operations, and finance. If you like a healthy dose of education mixed with a generous dash of insightful entertainment, prepare for your ears to be pleasured. Mm. Oh, yeah. Make sure to check us out at scalingcreator.com and also join our free Discord community. Scaling Creator launching in three, two, one. The following content is not intended for all listeners, but we strongly encourage all listeners to listen regardless. All right, welcome back to the Scaling Creator podcast. I'm Soren Dickens. I'm here with Erickson Dickens. And today our guest is Eric Long. Eric Long, (laughs) the brother from Sonora. Oh, yeah. Super stoked to have you on today. Yeah, thank you, guys. Definitely going to have some good conversations about a wide variety of topics. That's the cool thing about having you on is you are somebody who is not only complex, but insightful on a lot of different areas. And I think today, really looking forward to getting your perspective about growing up in a small town, just like 30 minutes away from where we grew up, how that shaped you, um, some of the adversity that you faced at a young age, how you've worked through that That's one big aspect of this podcast of what we're trying to do is learn about how people handle adversity and how they've channeled it into the different outlets of their life. We're going to talk about your athletic career. Obviously, you had a great athletic career, as did we. And so kind of finding some of the similarities, the parallels, the differences between your athletic career and ours and how that shaped your life. And then again, diving into adversity, some of the stuff that you've run into in your life and how that puts you on a path to self-discovery. And then also, we're going to talk about your creativity. All right? Because this is, you know, as creatives, (laughs) it's always cool when we have fellow creatives on and talk about our motivations, our influences behind that. And you recently just won some awards for your work, which big shout out to you for that. Pretty (laughs) awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, But yeah, I mean, we're we're looking forward to talking with you. And then also, you just got back from a trip. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, out of the country. I know you got some cool cultural perspectives on that. So us, you know, we like to travel as well. We've been to a lot of different places and learned a lot from that. So definitely want to touch on that, your experience there. But I think uh, to get started, just to give our listeners a perspective a little bit about where you are from, let's talk about your childhood growing up in Sonora, California. Yeah, so no secret, you know, Sonora's 30 minutes, 45 minutes with traffic, depending on how, you know, as they say, the Flatlander drives. Uh, (laughs) What's a Flatlander? uh, (laughs) Someone who will proceed to go 45 or exactly the speed limit in the left and right lane at the same time. Someone who has a fifth wheel or a tow behind trailer that will not pull over when there's optimal room to pull over and let people drive by. Someone who does not know how to park. So they're, who, they're from Oakdale, basically. Yeah, o- Oakdale to <laughs> Oakdale West. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, 45 minutes east of here. It sits right there in the, you know, uh, central Sierra Nevada mountains. It's uh, it's an interesting town, man. It's a, a red town in a blue state, very much so. Population, maybe, oh man, I don't know, the town itself, 5,000. The county is huge. You know, it encompasses all the way to, you know, essentially Highway 4, which is, you know, kind of like the Donner Pass, all the way down to Yosemite, all the way to almost Knight's Ferry. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, borders right up uh, to the top of the pass, which is the tallest pass, around 9,000 feet. It's unlike any place I've Mm -hmm. ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I mean, I just obviously traveling to Sonora throughout my entire life. It's gorgeous. I Mm -hmm. mean, just being up there in the mountains and the hills and, yeah, it's, it's right in our backyard and Every time I'm up there, I'm not saying it's as good as Oakdale because we all know it's not, but I think it's a close second if I'm being completely honest. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, dude, some of the places I've seen up there is like, it it still blows me away to the day. You know, I hike a lot. I go out there, I fish, I hunt and I do all that stuff. And it, uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll be taking photos and I have to like, just drop my camera, drop my phone. And I'll be like, dude, like I'm here. Like, holy, like this is. Like if I could FaceTime someone right now or mm-hmm. if I could take a photo with my eyes and like, you know, produce that image, it's it's something like you would see on National Geographic or mm-hmm. something like that. So it's definitely geographically a, a crazy interesting town. You know, we have the third biggest reservoir, New Maloney's. We have, uh, you know, uh, top two whitewater rafting uh, in Tuolumne River in the Cherry Creek. And then you go all the way up and you have the Middle Fork, which is world renowned for, you know, your fly fishing or, you know, uh, lake fishing, too. So it's kind of a honey hole of the town tucked away in this, you know, little 
oasis and you know more people than i know know of sonora right right but i always get the common misconception is like oh you know where are you from i said sonora they're like they're like oh i love sonoma you know i love yeah. my country i'm like no 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 it's an r it's not an country, yeah right? exactly yeah 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 so how would you say in your opinion you're like growing up there because you were you were actually born there correct or i was born down in los angeles but i moved up there super young four years old okay so essentially you know yeah. i mean everything i've known was the mountain life how do you feel like growing up in that environment where there's wide open spaces space to breathe essentially how do you feel like that shaped your upbringing because i know where we are in california where so much of the population lives in huge cities where it's super hustle and bustle right. how do you feel like growing up in sonora really kind of cultivated your upbringing man so you know uh my mom was definitely very open very uh you know, on the liberal side had, you know, uh, some of only, you know, a few uh, of gay people in the town were our friends. And, you know, I played sports and we traveled down here to, you know, hang out with, you know, my cousins that are from down here. And it's, you know, multicultural, multiracial, you know, and uh, so my family's Filipino and stuff like that. So I had a very different upbringing than what most people in Sonora did. It kind of led me to understand the, de the de definition of like hard work mm -hmm. and from sun up to sundown and understand that like you know there, there's unfortunate parts of it because you know you find people that have a last name in the town and, and you know their dad did kind of pave the way or that's why they got a spot on the sports or stuff like that mm -hmm. but it, it just showed me like if you're good enough and if you have talent enough and if the hard work is there it, it it's anything's possible okay. you know so it's it was very much that, you know, my mom worked a lot. I was raised by sports. So, you know, uh, only child. And so I had to, you know, adapt with multiple friends, you know, from different backgrounds. And it'd be no thing to, you know, sit there in my Chuck Taylors and go, you know, wrestle young calves mm -hmm. to brand them, you know, like that. Or, you know, you go fishing. When you get off of school, you throw your bag down and you're just out in the forest. Yeah. You're going, right. you know, and it's not here. And so, you know, it's being from the background I described, I'm very adverse to different situations that would make people from Sonora uncomfortable. You know, I hear people talk about like, oh, yeah, man, I had such a long day. I just got back from the mall in Modesto and mm -hmm. it's like traffic. I'm like, that was crazy. I'm like, dude, I just got held over for 12 hours in Louis Armstrong Airport in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, so the travel story is different, but I have a, a different perspective of like a slower lifestyle but mm -hmm. also a hard work grit integrity yeah. like you are who you are right yeah you know and, and there's good things and bad things you know sometimes in small towns when you mess up people don't forget that mm -hmm. you know there if you get a dui or you know if you and someone's girlfriend hooked up at some point yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's you're you're labeled as this person right yeah. but people know your business a right. lot quicker exactly yeah exactly so it, it's a it's a good thing and it's a very interesting spot to grow up you know because mm -hmm. you see all this it just shows you like again you know i reiterate the hard work like mm -hmm. you know it shows you you know kind of you go out here and you know there's no secret you know in, in the in the valley or you know even in like you know the bay area it's like a lot of tech people and they work from home and and they're like oh i gotta i gotta change my tire i gotta call AAA, and it's like what like i, I did that when i was like six mm -hmm. you know what i mean or like you change your oil and stuff like that like no problem and you know you get a lot of these people that are not adverse to working with their hands or the different skills are kind of they're locked into this bubble of, you know, they they'll just let someone else do it. Let mm -hmm. someone else do it. I think that the beauty of Sonora is like, you know, we're so far up there. Like I talk to people and they're like, oh, you know, it's kind of a far drive. It's like 10, 15 minutes from here. And I'm like, 10, 15. I'm like, I'm used to two hours. And I'm yeah. like, you know what I mean? So, right. but also at the same time, it's like, you're that far. So you have to figure it out. Or you have to use the people you know around you. Mm -hmm. right? Makes you more resourceful. Exactly. Yeah. So the ingenuity and the understanding and like just and from everything, man. You mm -hmm. know, it's just it's way more creative, and you have to have like kind of like a you know a hillbilly like you know mentality of trying yeah. to figure it and you know Jimmy rig all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, piece you know? it all together. It's yeah. a survivalist mm -hmm. like skill set. How old were you when you first realized that you had to? adopt those skill sets and that you couldn't just call AAA or there wasn't a quick fix solution, you know, DoorDash or right. just, <laughs> you know, how, how old were you when you started to realize, oh, wow, I'm learning something by having to do all this, I guess, compared to people who might be in big city where everything's just one phone call away and 
other people are doing everything for you. Right. How old were you and what was that realization like? I mean, I don't know if it, an exact age is to it, but I remember, you know, I've, I've always grown up and my friends were older. You know, they were seniors when I was in uh, freshman. So, you know, it wasn't like freshman year. It was, it was younger than that, that, you know, eighth, maybe sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I knew that wrestling and I, I would hang out with a, a good friend of mine and his dad was just due to hard ass, you know, up at 4 a.m., bed at 9 a.m. You know, they had everything, cows, horses, sheep, goats, everything. And he was just super strict on his kid. And, and, and we wrestled and stuff like that. And if he lost a match, he had to do it like this. And, you know, there's a certain way you kind of get these parents that like live through their kids type of situation. And uh, I think that I was just like, man, I never had a dad. So my mom was like, oh, it's OK, we'll get him next time, you know. But I'm like, well, you know, what, what if I don't, you know, what if I don't, what if I don't? So I adapted that very early of like, you know, when you do something, you go full speed and you either mess up full speed or you win full speed. But I remember a time that I was actually in high school and I just started driving and, uh, you know, I'd done a fair share of hiking and, you know, exploring or hanging out or breaking up fights or getting in fights or, you know, all the normal, typical stuff. I had the flat tire and we were leaving we were going to actually ditch my six period class. And I was like, dude, I got a flat tire. My buddy Todd Armstrong was like, oh, we'll just fix it. And I'm like, well, how? Do yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm 15 years old. And I don't know how to fix a tire. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like a weird perspective. Like, how? And this, this kid, I mean, if you saw him, he's like 110 pounds soaking wet, like emo skateboarder kind of, you know, just a punk rock kid. Mm -hmm. And he just got down, put the jack up there, yeah. showed me how to do the tire. And at that point, it's just been a, a learning experience. You know, I can, I just feel it taught me that I can learn anything from anyone mm -hmm. the second you turn off that brain or the second you turn off that you know the sponge effect from someone is you know it just makes you so arrogant and so you know almost disrespectful to yourself and everyone else type of thing yeah you know so i definitely think i think that's super cool too because you mentioned you didn't grow up with a dad and i think that a lot of people oftentimes who don't grow up with a dad they don't learn certain skills like that that you referenced and the fact that you were able to pick up those skills from other people um, based on your experiences that's like a testament to your ability to learn and your curiosity because yeah i mean we didn't we grew up with the dad up to a certain point he passed away when we were kids basically but i remember because uh, we didn't really have that influence over us to learn those kind of practical things that you mentioned we had to learn them from like, uncles or other people who would just kind of teach us things here and there. But yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's very true. And I think that's often overlooked in society from people. You know, if you don't have that strong kind of father figure, oftentimes the the kid can go astray and end up in places, and that kind of comes down to exactly what you're talking about. So, were there any other things that you saw growing up where you thought, oh wow, I didn't really know how to do this because there wasn't a father figure in your life? What were some of those things that you may have encountered in your teenage years or even like early adulthood? Right. We looked at the situation and said, I've never even thought about how I was supposed to learn this. Right. Dude, yeah, definitely two that come off like right off the top of the head is like uh, responsibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up uh, not the best in school, you know, didn't really care. You know, obviously I didn't translate to my college experience, you know, I, I completely excelled, but it was, I just didn't get arrested. And, you know, essentially I can do, you know, whatever I want. It was, you know, my mom never held me accountable because she was so busy doing her work or doing that, you know? And so, you know, at the age, you know, I started to get mobile, got my car around and I'm like, cool, you know, like, you know, always this traditional thing of like, I got to work. So I worked at Taco Bell for two weeks and I'm like, you know, this dude, like, I'm not doing this. Like, and then, you know, I met somebody who was selling weed. And so, you know, one thing led to another and then we're driving around in my Jeep and, you know, we're selling weed and it's just like, you know, there was no, no authoritative figure that was like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, stop. Like yeah. you can't do that or you're disrespecting people. And so for the longest time, man, I just walked around like I had the biggest chip on my shoulder. You know, like you couldn't tell me anything. You couldn't teach me anything like you couldn't. Whatever you said, it didn't matter because I already knew it. Or if you wanted to argue, you tell me the sky is not blue. Let's let's argue mm -hmm. for no reason. You know, and I think that's what it, it got me lost up until, you know, a couple years ago, probably four or five years ago until I started to understand that, like, oh, you know, this is, you know, more arrogance this is uh 
not a good way to live, mm -hmm. right? Because I found myself not liking who I was and how could I offer anything to anyone, whether it's, you know, male or female, platonic relationship, emotional relationship, mm -hmm. romantic. I couldn't offer that because I never knew what that was. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not necessarily any, anyone's fault. It's just how I was brought up is that I was just running amok. I just didn't get arrested and got in good enough grades to graduate, mm -hmm. you know, and I robbed myself of, you know, probably a, a pretty substantial career uh, as far as, you know, athletics go. I don't know if I would take it back because some of the stories I have that other kids were, you know, in art class or doing business management. And I was like, dude, some of that I did was like so memorable, you know, so memorable. But then at the same time, I look back and the, and the stuff I did with the people I did it with are still doing that kind of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it's like, I woke up late, yeah. you know, you and woke uh, up though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the good thing. But so many people don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. or just, you know, the normal stuff like, you know, doing laundry and then leaving my clothes in the dryer for three days, you know, and if I wanted a shirt, I would just turn on 30 and cool. I look good before I go out, you know, and there's no accountability of like you set these responsibilities and engrainments and this is how you talk to people and this is how you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not outwardly disrespectful. I'm not, you know, outwardly doing that, but you know, I'm very sarcastic and you know, my filter doesn't, you know, filter as much as what normal people does. And so, you know, I may say some stuff that, you know, offends people or hurts people. And I, I'm joking, but people don't know me and know that I am joking. Mm -hmm. So I think that that those are two of the biggest things are like, you know, messing up, taking accountability instead of pointing the finger. Well, if he wouldn't have done that, it wouldn't have happened. If he wouldn't have done No, I, I did that. I, yeah. That's on me. And I think that was the biggest thing from not having dad is what I realized is, you know, just uh, understanding these values and morals in life. Not to say my mom didn't teach me that, but she did the best I could. But I think there's only so much a mom to son relationship can harbor compared to a, a dad to son, mm -hmm. right? Because if, if I would have had this dad, he could have lived this. Yeah. He could have you know, showed me, you know, like, oh, you know, when your friend acts this way or when, when your coach talks to you this way or when a girl does this or when your car does this, you know? And so it's not always blaming someone or trying to find a loophole or a way to get out of it. You man the f and roll with the punches, mm -hmm. you know? And I think yeah. that was for sure the two biggest things that I missed out on. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, that, thanks for talking so candid on that. That's all good. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's true, man. It's real. Yeah. It's very real. Yeah. yeah. It is. When you were kind of running your wild boy, you know, yeah. spread <laughs> on, on this, <laughs> on this topic, because I, I, I can relate to that. You know, there was that period of time where you weren't being held accountable. Right. And you felt like you could just get away with anything. Oh, yeah. And as long as you didn't get arrested oh, yeah. and the cops weren't called, mm -hmm. you could just do whatever you want. And you f you probably felt somewhat euphoric through a period of it. Oh, yeah. But then when it started to catch up with you, yeah. how did that make you feel when you started, when those days started coming to an end? How did it make you feel? But then also, what did it do to the relationships in your life? I felt like I was at sea and I couldn't touch bottom and I couldn't grab onto anything. And I was doing my best to tread water. You know, I, I, look, I look at it and it was just like the relationships I had were, you know, buddies that were, I have buddies that I've done some wild stuff too and they've made beautiful lives for themselves, had beautiful families, beautiful wives, uh, great careers. You know, we're talking very, very well off careers. And then there's some buddies that, you know, like we said, never woke up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an interesting aspect is like, you know, it's not so much as an addict that if you if you try to get clean, I, was not, I don't have an addictive personality, right? I can do whatever. And very thankfully, I don't have that. You know, I quit drinking cold turkey a year ago as of two days ago. And so it but it ruined this relationship because it's like, you know, they want you to be one thing. And then when you're not that thing, you're not the, the person to call anymore. Or you don't have this, whatever the party may be oriented around, you don't have that to offer it. So you're not that person no more. So now you're like, damn, did I, you know, you're sitting here second guessing yourself and you're like, well, should I just run this lifestyle? And then, you know, eventually, but, you know, you look at the bigger picture and it's, you know, kind of the American dream, you know, I, you know, I want a wife, a kids to be happy to raise my kids to teach them all the mistakes that I made so they don't replicate it. But, um, uh, I think it, uh, it, it, dude, it eliminated a lot of people. 
right? And we're talking mm -hmm. people that are 30 and 40 years old that I used to do this when I was 25 and they were 30 and 35, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was this kid, super athletic, big, strong, fast, you know, at least a seven with personality and looks, you know, and all that. And then it just, like I said, I woke up and they're still doing this. I could still go to the bars and I don't drink and, you know, they give me a Shirley Temple and I still look and they're in the same bar, yeah. still doing the same things. Mm -hmm. And so I just realized I had to eliminate this connection. And it was some of the dopest times of my life, dude. I mean, we're sitting there, you know, almost blacked out drunk driving in the snow and like my old school geo metro and they have the doors open and they're skiing you mm -hmm. know what i mean <laughs> we went from that to like sitting at home watching planet earth yeah you know and yeah. so it's like dude hell yeah i love that yeah. like of course i love doing crazy stuff like that but it just doesn't line up with your goals or it doesn't line up with your ambitions mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we stumble and we fail and like all that but you know you have to like we were talking earlier, you have to surround yourself with like a team, mm -hmm. right? And like, this is why you guys are just dope humans. Like it's mad respect to you guys because like you guys saw a goal, you know, you guys saw this purpose and I'm sure people are like, oh, that's sick. That's cool. That's cool. But no one wanted to be like, well, how can I help? Or how can I input or, mm -hmm. or what can I do? Cause they want to reap the benefits when it's done, mm -hmm. right? You guys are sitting here with the plow, the seeds, the irrigation system. You guys are setting up this foundation because you believe in something. Mm -hmm. So when people don't believe in it or don't see fit, then it, it's hard, but you have to break that connection. You can love people from afar, mm -hmm. but you know, if you can't offer them something positive or if they can't offer something positive yeah. to you, then there's no point in doing this. Right. You know, there, it, it, and it, 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 life is short, very mm -hmm. short. So, you know, it's like, like every time around you guys, I smile and I'm just like, what's up? Like, you yeah. know, like, what's up? Like, you know, this is our third time hanging out maybe, Yeah. you know, and it's just always this goal, this creative ingenuity of this mm -hmm. goal, this goal, this goal. And you guys have each other and that teamwork is special. Yeah. And so, you know, it's no different than like, if you look at Kyrie Irving, he's bouncing around teams because he's a cancer. It's the same way I look at life. Like if, if these people aren't, aren't positively benefiting it or like, you know, you get a job mm -hmm. and they're like, you know. Oh, congrats, but 90% of people, can you get me on? Can you give me a job? Yeah. Can you help me? Can you, what about this? Can you just throw me a bone, do that? And it's like, it's hard not to help. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's also like, you know, you should be establishing these goals to where everyone can eat. Yeah. You know, and not just one person providing food to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that that's huge too. Definitely huge. Yeah, well said. And I appreciate that too. We feel the same way about you. Absolutely. Hence why you're here. I mean, yeah. yeah. the older I get to, the more I realize how valuable time really is and how finite like your energy is. And so as yeah. you were saying, you want people who are around you, if you're going to give their time to them, you want to make sure that they're elevating you in some way, mm -hmm. whether that's you know, intellectually, whether that's professionally, whatever it might be, it's important that the the relationship is only going to help you grow. I forgot who said it, but I know there's that famous quote where the person said, show me your five friends and I'll show you your future. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. one always really stuck with me. I remember when I made a transition from being that like wild boy character into a more dedicated, self-discovered route in life. I I struggled with the relationships that I had before because people didn't see me. They didn't almost, they didn't take me serious right. in the new pursuit that I mm -hmm. was on. So what, what was that like for you when you did make that shift in, in your life? How did those relationships unfold? Because I'm sure a lot of them were skeptical of this new Eric, mm -hmm. right? Oh, this will last for a month. Yeah. yeah. How did, yeah. How did, yeah. did anyone, you know, get right behind you and support you and yeah. say, I'm going to help you be the better version of yourself, Eric, right. or were people almost criticizing you and um, doubting you in the process? Right. Yeah. You know, it's definitely both, you know, definitely a family. I mean, you know, my cousin, Andrew, you know, he's always been a huge outlet and stuff like that. And then you meet people along the way, you know, you meet people, you know, like you guys, or like, you know, my buddy Ray or my buddy Ulysses that like, it almost seems that they pick you up in the midst of this transition, this journey, and they, you know, add fuel to the tank, right? But as far as like the relationships I had going in, it's, I mean, it's exactly like you said, oh, this will last a month or he can't do it or no one can change that fast or, you know, it's impossible, you know, it's nothing. And it's like, all right, well, you get to a certain point and you're like this mm -hmm. and you're like you mm -hmm. and watch me do it. And either you're going to struggle with me 
and we'll make something beautiful together or you're going to look back and be like mm -hmm. how did that happen yeah i did not think that you know you said something about a quote and i just i i heard a quote the other day and it was um uh, no, the, the same man won't step in the same river twice. Therefore, it is not the same man. Therefore, it is not the same river. Hmm. So I look at that and I think about it every day. And it's like, you know, of course, like there's something that pops off. And, you know, I used to have a little bit of an angry issue and, you know, arrogance and cocky. And then instead of just going and, you know, freaking out or like, you know, letting my first emotion handle it, you know, I take a step back and like adjust and try to see the pros and cons of what, what what's good if i go about it this route what's good if i go about it this route you know maybe even take an hour to, to respond to a text message or mm -hmm. you know if if you're looking at you know different jobs and contracts you know instead of just going oh that's where the money is boom but it's also like you know more money you know really is more problems it's, yeah you know it doesn't matter you know how much you make is if you're not happy right you know i mean but it's also kind of a the thing because you know you need money to do the stuff that makes us happy mm -hmm. So it's kind of an interesting uh, thing, but I mean, relationships are so finicky, dude. They're, like mm -hmm. you said, they're finite. You know, time is finite. Relationships are finite. Mm -hmm. You know, and and once we realize that people are really in our life for a season, and it could be nothing. It could be that you slip in the shower, or yeah. you have a disease, or you know, you get hit by a drunk driver, or yeah. something. It's uh, something out of our control. So yeah. it's. If you find that person, regardless if you're attracted to them or not, or friendship, relationship, you find those people, you need to hold on to them and yeah. be like, dude, you are dope. Like, I don't see your vision, but I understand and I believe in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's all it is, is someone just pushing someone like, you know, because there's still buddies that, you know, I tell people, you know, what I do, contracts or pg and &E and stuff like that. They're like, oh, congrats, congrats. And you shake your hand at the bar, turn around. And I literally can hear him and they're like, oh, he'll probably, he'll probably run that company into the ground in a month or, you know, he'll, he'll probably get fired. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, like, how are you showing face? Like, that you're happy for me, but then you turn around, but it's a lot of hatred mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And it's project, it's mm -hmm. projection often. Right. People will, they'll, they'll really be talking about their own self doubts and they project it on somebody else because they're too weak and insecure to actually make the changes in their life that will lead to fulfillment or happiness. And I think the fact that you woke up, I guess, per se, that's a huge testament to your strength and your ability to um, embrace self like introspection, like reflection, right. because so many people recognize they have a problem, but it's a lot harder to actually go out of their way and change because the comfort zone is a disease and it's a comfortable disease. And the mm -hmm. fact that you saw that, that it was becoming a problem that was affecting different aspects of your life and you went out and you made an actual change. Uh, I mean, that's huge, man. Um, let me ask right. you a question. I'm curious because you said it was maybe four or five years ago. Was there a specific event that triggered it or was it like you said like a lead up of just you realizing and understanding that there was a bit of an issue at hand yeah i mean i think there there was like two kind of big events i mean obviously you know me getting shot mm -hmm. was definitely which is you know why i, I kind of laughed when you said triggered about oh, it shoot, you know? even, <laughs> let's, well, yeah let's dive you know, into that like one no a little pun bit intended, but you know now that we know but yeah, yeah. so October, uh, October 14th of 2020, uh, about 9.30 at night, I had, uh, you know, this guy. Just not, yeah, let's not mention names or anything. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I got you. This uh, this guy, you know, I went to high school with, and his girlfriend played on our uh, traveling softball team, really good team, and, uh, you know, he just wasn't good enough. And, you know, if, you, if you've met me for more than 15 minutes, dude, you know that I'm wearing loud clothes. I'm loud. I'm unapologetically myself, but I'll still give you the shirt off my back but mm -hmm. everyone's free game right everyone jokes are humor is should be a love language sarcasm should be a love language I love you that. Know? yeah i like that and uh yeah he just um you know i'm just myself on the softball field i'm more comfortable i'm an athlete so i'm able to produce so i'm able to you know talk trash and back mm -hmm. it up you know baseball is not my first sport but it's you know i'm not bad at it and uh he just wanted to get on the team wanted to get on the team and uh you know, just kept saying no, no, no. Well, one night he, uh, him and my buddy were were talking, and then he, you know, he was like, "Well, Garrick," and I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, and he said it not joking. And I'm like, well, "That dude, you know, what I mean, like, what's up, like this dude?" And he's like, "Oh, you're, you know, you're trying to, you know, get with my wife and do this and do that and all this stuff." And I'm like, "What? Like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, I no, like, absolutely not." And so, one thing led to another. We, uh, you know, there's a red barn over by Maloney's, and you know, essentially he 
threw a, a bait out there and I took the bait and I went I went down there with uh, three of my buddies and we got into a physical altercation and um, yeah it led to m- me being on top of them and I can just you know I've never I don't know what it was dude I don't you know I, I can't to this day I still can't understand it but I had him by the throat and it was just one more shot and he's out mm-hmm. he's out for good you know and, and something wouldn't let me throw that shot and I'm sitting there and it's almost in slow motion I can just feel him like you know, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, like, stay away from me, you and your tweaker ass girlfriend, you know, just shouting all yeah. sorts of profanities at him. And uh, my buddy pulled me off. We got to go. We got to go. I jumped in the back seat of the car. My buddy was driving another friend in the front seat. And uh, I'm sitting in the car, adrenaline rushing after the fight. Like, you know, I'm sitting there just like <sighs> trying to calm down. And our car was pulled in. So the front was right here. And then his front was right here. So he's backed in and they measured about five and a half feet away. And uh he had went to the back of his truck and had pulled out a nine millimeter and shot three times into the car. And we had double 5% window tint. Uh Like it was all black WRX, just blacked out, murdered out. And uh, the first one came through and hit me in my chest. And uh, I just remember being so loud, dude. Like it was like, boom. And I was like, he was like, what was that? And I was like, I got shot. And the driver was like, what do you mean? And it hit me right here, just like the movies, bro. Slowly started leaking. It just, just missed your heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, literally right here. God. And bounced off of, off of my third rib and came out my armpit. You know, he goes, what, what was that? And I was like, I got shot. And he's like, what? And I thought it hit, it hit me and I could feel the burn. I was like, he shot my nipple off, dude. And then the second shot came in. And that's when it hit me. And, you know, the brachial uh, artery scar, right there. Yeah. And that's why it gives, the, you know, the, the finger of kind uh-huh. of. I can't really feel other than, you know, these two aspects. You can see where I work out. Other this I can feel, everything else is numb. Yeah. So, uh, were you in shock? I mean, you said right immediately after you got shot, you knew you had gotten shot. Yeah. I feel like most people in that situation, they would have been like, what just even happened? Like, how did you, where, where was your mind when that was happening? <sighs> Dude, it, it, the, when the second one hit me, the first one hit me and I'm like, oh, and then boom, the second one hit me. And I just remember looking at my arm and my arm was just like this on the ground uh-huh. and blood hit and it hit that artery in yeah. there and it just sprayed. I remember taking my thumb and just putting it right in the bullet hole and just trying to pinch whatever I could find and stop leaking the blood. He shot again and it went right up in top and it hit the top of the car, uh-huh. like right where like the frame meets the car. And if it, they said if it was like, you know, two and a half inches down, it would have hit right, right into my head. And uh, he drove me to the hospital and we get to take your, your buddy drove you. Yeah. To the yeah. Okay. Drove me to the hospital and we get there and uh, this high to COVID. Right. And so they're like, what happened? I was wearing a, a gray Carhartt shirt and, you know, normal pants and boots. And it was just like from here down blood. You know, I lost uh, 3.68 liters of blood, 73 uh, percent. I get to Sonora Hospital and they were like, um, can we help you guys? And I was like, I've been shot. And they're like, what? And I was like, I've been fucking shot. And I roll out of the car and they're like, his eyes were like, what? The, you know? And so they get me in there and they get me like, <laughs> so crazy. They get me like five feet from the bed and they're all, Eric, can you walk to the bed? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I guess. And I remember like I've blacked out and I've, I'm, when I was drinking, you know, I've blacked out. And I remember like the actual sensation of like, oh, here we go. Uh-huh. Like, you know, this drink, it does it. Like this was just like white, but like quiet white. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was getting there, I was getting there, getting there, and I sat down on the bed, and everything just came to, and it was just <sighs> people were running around, and they're trying to do this. They couldn't put any IVs in this arm. I'd lost so much blood, so they couldn't find any IVs. Oh. So this girl was just like stabbing me, repeated with like a 19 gauge, and like, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. What's, what's, what, what? And I'm like, look, if you don't put it in my foot, I'm going to die. And she's like, it's my first day. And I'm like, oh, oh great, no. dude. <laughs> like, you know, I make no. it to the hospital and then it happens. Oh. And uh, so O negative, which is a second rarest blood type, universal donor. I can only accept O negative, but I can give to everyone. Uh, they finally got me into the ambulance because the smoke was so bad they couldn't metaflight me to UC Davis. So I had an ambulance ride down to doctor's hospital. They were able to bag me. Uh, I'd passed away twice, flatlined twice in the ambulance, a minute and 29 and three minutes and 36 seconds. Uh, woke up with the paddles, the lady freaking out, you know, like, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And I'm like, do what? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going on. They stabilized me there, take a helicopter ride. I get to UC Davis around 4.30 in the morning on on the 15th. 
and they, you know, you know, white male, 30 years old, this way, this high, two gunshots, da, 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 right into surgery. And they're, you know, essentially they're going to, they're telling me that they're just going to go through, clean it up, sew me up, and it should be good to go, you know. And I kept telling them if I wake up, I better wake up with both arms. Like, I don't care if it's like this mm -hmm. or whatnot. Like, I want to wake up with both my arms and then we can talk about options. You know, do not take my arm. So I couldn't feel it, mm -hmm. right? Like, I couldn't feel it. And I'm like, I just lost my arm. Yeah. You know, and this is coming from a dude that done anything, hiking, fishing, football, you know, multiple college awards, you know, and like, now I can't even feel my arm. Mm -hmm. And so you want to talk about being humbled, dude. Yeah. Like, dude, you know, and uh, getting the surgery, come back out. It's like... I'm waking up and I'm, the dude's sitting there, a little Filipino dude named Ben. And I'm like, what's going on, dude? And he's like, how you feeling? I'm like, like, like what time is it? He's like, it's 7.30. And I'm like, it's like three hours of surgery. He's like, oh, no, it's, it's 7.30 at night on the 16th. You were in surgery for seven and a half hours. Wow. I'm like, what? I'm wow. like, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, they had to come through. They had neurology come through, cardiovascular come through, and trauma come through. And uh, it went through the main the main nerve, so that's why the nerve damage is still not here. And uh, what they did is they took from point A to point B, they put cheesecloth in between, okay. and hopefully the cheesecloth will eventually, you know, they grow super slow, like a, a millimeter per month or something like that, or 0. 0.5 per month. It went through the main, the, the, the main vein, of course, but yeah, the main vein that feeds the arm, so they had to attach that back together, and then... That was the artery. Mm -hmm. And so they took a femoral from my leg. They took a femoral artery from my leg and put it in my brachial artery. Okay. And then trauma came through and had to stitch up where the actual gunshot oh. went and kind of did that, that, and then stitches on the leg and all that type of stuff. And yeah. that was um, during the height of COVID. So I was in ICU and UC Davis and, you know, it's three hours from my mm -hmm. house. So it was about six, seven days of me by myself with four channels of TV, three mm -hmm. of them, which were TV Telemundo. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one was like public access, you uh -huh. know? And so, man, it was just so humbling, dude. I got out and before that, you know, I was just, dude, just talking, dude, mm -hmm. you know, looking for a fight, looking just aggression, inward, you know, an, an inward, uh, I don't know exact the word inward, like, you know, expansion of, you know, how depressed and lonely and sad and just angry for no reason, fighting, you know, drinking whiskey, no problem, driving drunk, just being an asshole, dude, right? And now I get out of the hospital and I'm like tying my Chuck Taylors like this, you know. With like, your pinkies. Yeah, literally, yeah. like, you know, and so it's, uh, dude, that, that for sure was a big, big moment that had like set my life straight, mm -hmm. like that had like... You know, I, I was given a second chance, yeah. you know, by God. And this is, you know, because people got to be careful what they pray for, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they pray for, hey, don't make me feel like this. You know, I don't want anxiety. I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, he's going to put you through tests, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how we grow. And that's how, you know, growth is uncomfortable, like yeah. you said, you know, and, and that's 100% what it is, is if you're comfortable, you're not growing. Yeah. You know, because comfortable, what I like to look and what I like to tell people is that it's uh, like like stagnant, right? You look at a pond and what, what, is, what do stagnant things do? They, they grow parasites. Mm -hmm. What are parasites? Parasites is where one organism is benefiting, the other organism is producing. And so now you become a parasite off whatever organism you want, whether it's your friend groups, whether it's to yourself, whether it's to your family, you know? And so without that constant moving and rushing and flowing of whatever may be creativity, you know, pain, anger, whatever you have to move move through it mm -hmm. to grow the more uncomfortable you are the more you're growing the more risk you take the more you fail but the more you succeed it wouldn't be fishing if you caught a fish every time it wouldn't be gambling if you won every time mm -hmm. right you know and so you can gamble in different aspects you don't have to go and put money into a slot machine i mean you guys are gambling right now you know and you guys know you're gonna win mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing is like dude we don't we will not fail mm -hmm. you know and so it it just took that aspect of my life of losing it to being like i need to really rake up mm -hmm. you know like everything i've been praying for this is what it's for you know and obviously i still talk like a sailor and you know i i do crazy stuff still but i don't you know i'm not i don't do drugs anymore i don't drink anymore i don't do that before i touch my phone in the morning i say a prayer before i go to bed i say a prayer and you know, trying to live the best life I know how to live currently, mm -hmm. you know, with him, for him kind of situation. But it's also I prayed to be 
awoke. You know, I prayed for this change. I prayed for this. I didn't specifically, hey, change me in A, B, and C. He was like, okay, you want change? Yeah. We're going to give you change. Give change. We're, we're going to yeah. we're going to literally rebirth you. Yeah. But now you know all the dumb you've done and you know what not to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and so again, it kind of all wraps up into the thing of like the relationships with some people see me as the old Eric. And they're like, what? No way, dude. Like, no way. Come on, let's go to the bathroom and do a bump. You know, let's go mm -hmm. have fun. Let's do this. And I'm like, bro, I don't even drink anymore. Yeah. Like, I'm here to, like, hang out and party because, like, I love people and I love environments. And mm -hmm. I love talking to people. But, like, you know, I mean, I don't, whether it was prayer or I believe it is, whether it was the universe, whether it was scientific and Western medicine, mm -hmm. for some reason, I'm still here. You know, and it, it doesn't make sense to me because I don't know why I'm still here yet. I'm still searching for that purpose. So that's a miracle. And I think you're still here to be an example to others right. about the possibility of changing for the better. I mean, to come back from something like that, your story is a testament, man. More people need to hear about your story. That's yeah. that's the thing. It's like, because yeah. you are, that's just crazy, man. I, I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy that we were able to meet like when we did and... Man, that just that gave me a lot of anxiety just thinking about what you experienced, bro. <laughs> like for real. Yeah. Like I can't even imagine that. That would yeah, holy would, cow. What what would you say like after going through that experience? How did you start to see a difference in your life when you did start to make those small changes? And I know that built on each other, it compounded, the momentum was going. How did you start to see your life change for the better? You know, it wasn't all for the better right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I sat there and, uh, you know, at that moment in time, I didn't quit drinking. You mm -hmm. know, I still drink. And, you know, I'll, I'll admittedly say that I would buy a $13 fifth of Fireball and a thing of Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. And I would take my truck and I would pound that bottle and I would drive around, listen to music. And I would sit there and I would cry and I would question and I would be so frustrated and so angry and hit my steering wheel, get out and scream as loud as I could. Why did you keep me alive? Mm -hmm. You know, there were so many times in my life that I felt I was kept alive to be punished for all the dumb and stupid I've done in the yeah. past. So I think that was one of the biggest, biggest struggles that I had to get over. And I mean, you know, I still falter back on that. You know, I sit here and I'm like 32, all my friends have kids, they have, you know, houses and families and, and doing this and doing that. And I'm like, I got to realize that I'm in, I'm in a competition with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't my path. And growing up in a small town, again, that's very Mary High School sweetheart kind of, yeah. oh, I can't date you because you did this sophomore year or did this. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whatever, you know, whatever, dude. Like, yeah. you know, and so I think it's uh, it helped me realize that, like, you have to live for the now. I was, dude, so negative, bro. Like, if anything, if it wasn't a yes, then it was automatic no. You know what I mean? Like, yo, let's go to the rodeo. And they'd be like, well, I don't know. I'd be like, all right, okay, whatever, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or like, if a road trip got planned and something got faltered, I'd be like, this is ruined. Instead of being like, you know, I, I hike a lot, right? So it's like the, from point A, which is leaving the car or the trailhead to point B, which is where people think the best view is the top of the mountain. You know, the whole, my whole life, I was just like this hiking like this. And then I realized that like some of the dopest parts of life come in that journey and you have to love that journey mm -hmm. you have to hate that journey you have to you have to embrace that journey yeah. dude it's not oftentimes about the, really the end goal the destination it's the right. journey to get there that's right. where you can gain the most insight the most right. introspection and yeah it's too many people fail to grasp that concept 100 percent. yeah and it's like you know if we to like for you guys dude it's like you know if you started with doing a couple videos and then you, you saw the end goal of it but it's like dude you know you miss out on like little interactions you know, like this or going to the Philippines or, you know, mm -hmm. doing or doing just like interactions of being like, hey, check this out. I thought this was cool. We could mimic this or we could do that. Like just this grind and this dude, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I can't. I don't I don't see the end goal. It's like, dude, that's when you have to like lean on yourself and fully like believe in yourself. And again, that's like where the team comes in. Yeah. Dude. It's like dude, I'm not really feeling it today. And you're like, dude, we got to go. Like, we got to go. Like, right. no one's feeling it, right? Mm -hmm. No one wants to wake up and does a nine to five. No one wants to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it just taught me to be like, so in the moment, dude. Like, I have to feel everything. I have to smell everything. I have to taste everything. I have to be like, so many times that I would go hiking and there'd be like a dope waterfall and they'd be like, oh, jump off. And I'd be like, oh, I'm cool. Like, you know, obviously, you know, test your 
make sure you don't break your legs or break your neck and shit like that. But it's like, let's go. Yeah. Or, you know, I just got back from Puerto Rico and they're like, you know, they're serving like uh, iguana and people are like, oh, that. I'm like, yeah, I'll get two skewers. Yeah. You know, let's eat it. Like, yeah. you know, you got to do this, like, because you're only here for so long. It just taught me how fragile and how mm -hmm. important this is. Not that w what we're doing right now, but everything to wake up, you're only given a certain amount of minutes in the day. And the more you are on your phone or the more you're, procrastinate or more you're talking about you can't control mm -hmm. you can only control you and how you react to certain situations yeah and that's dude it just taught me that and it just showed me like that like you have to be in this game to roll with the punches you have to surround yourself with good positive people even if you see them two three times a year you know that those two two three times a year are going to get you on to the next four or five mm -hmm. months right and it just showed me appreciation of when people come into your life and they give an outward of love or give an outward of support, give an outward of emotion, positive effect that you need to return that. Yeah. And you know, those people deserve that from you because you're able to embrace it. So now you need to be able to reciprocate it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I mean, it's, it's huge, bro. It's definitely what it is. Very articulate. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I read this thing today and it talked about how people understand a lot more than they can articulate. Mm -hmm. And so being able to articulate your story yeah. and connect with people who have struggled with those similar issues, I mean, that, that goes along with what you're, what you're doing now. We're having this conversation. You might not be married with the kids and the house and all the things right. that you thought were expected of you as a kid, but who is going to play the role that you're playing now for the people who, you know, were 16, 17, 18 years old and completely lost. Like who's right. going to, who's going to wake up the those teenagers who didn't have a dad to wake them up, it's gonna be these people who have the voice mm -hmm. right. who they can look at and say, wow, yeah. he has a cool life. I wanna know more about his story. Yeah. Right. And your story is more valuable because you actually lived it. You were on the wrong side of the path and people tend to take people like you more seriously because you're not just saying, um, do what I say, not what I do. It's like right. you actually did it mm -hmm. and you experienced all the, all the shit that came with it. I mean, you almost died, you were on a bad path and then you now serve as an example that it's never really too late and that things can be turned around. I, th I think I see it some, like we were at the gym yesterday and these uh, these little, you know, we call them the little homies, but they're, you know, 15, 16 years old. Mm. And they're like, they're flexing and they're yeah. like, dude, they're like- Taking I, their gym pics. Yeah, they're like, dude, I just want to get like big, da, da, da. And they're like, you know, I'm wearing like, you know, double XL shirt mm. and like, you know, my little short shorts and just trying to get into that, you know, no more tank top, no more bag. Just trying to go baggy clothes kind of, you know, maybe it's a new fad. I've seen it out there, yeah. but it's also like, you know, I don't, I don't want to brag or, but you know, I don't need to, cause I can always, we can always improve in every aspect. Dude's just like, oh, you know, I heard about you. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I heard, you know, you're Eric, da, da, da. and these kids are 15, dude. Mm -hmm. I, heard, I heard you're the one who got shot. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I did. And he's like, how much can you like put up now? I'm like, bro, it's not about the weight. You know what I mean? It, it, no, you have to get your form down. You have to, you, you can't build a house from the top up, right? You have to grind. Like you're 15, dude, mm -hmm. and you're telling me you want to be the same size as me. First of all, good luck. Second of all, wait for puberty to hit. <laughs> Third, establish these fundamentals mm -hmm. in your life that you can fall back on. Right. And that's what I never had is that I was always just and running and gunning. Mm -hmm. I'll learn from my own mistakes. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of cool to talk to these kids that are like, oh, what do you think about this? What should I do here? What should I do here? You know, and they're trying to put up crazy heavy weight and they're like all up, like doing form. And then like I just realized like talking to these kids and like to show them diet, like, you know, stuff like that. I showed them like, dude, this is like this is what I should have been doing. Right. Like I should have been in here and not smashing mailboxes or, yeah. or stealing alcohol from, you know, CVS yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and so it's cool to see a younger generation that like actually cares about themselves. And they're like oh, they have like their little rat pack and they're in competition mm -hmm. with themselves. And it's cool. And it's cool to like, you know, share my story. And these kids light up and they're like, holy, I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, if you do this, you're woke up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And then I realized like you know, lifting all this heavy weight and stuff form and all that. I'm like, dude, that's just an outward expression of life. Like mm -hmm. so many people pile so much on their plate and then they fit up somewhere. It's like, dude, on, like, like, like I said, only control what you can control. Just try to stay positive and hard, dude. I struggle with anxiety. I struggle with depression, but dude, you got to wake up and do it right. Mm -hmm. Cause if, if you don't do it for yourself, no one's going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So you got it. You got to grind, dude. You got to find this grind. You yeah. got to find this power within yourself to keep pushing, dude. And it's, it's hard, bro. It's been hard, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But it's 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 a must. You got to. Yeah. You know? But when you find yourself maybe piling on too much, do you have a system in 
to put yourself back in the check? Do you, do you, can you identify it pretty quickly? I know personally, when I started to make a shift in my life and I would fall back to maybe the old version of me, it would take a while before I would catch myself. But now if I, I'm like one day, if I do something out of like rhythm for one day, I look at myself and say, man, I piled on too much weight at the gym yesterday because I, I wanted to be two years down the road or I wanted to be a different version of myself, but I've not, I haven't put in the work yet. So I don't really, I don't really deserve that version of me yet. Right. How can you articulate that? Because I feel like that's something that would be really valuable to listeners who, who, who struggle with that because we all want to be the version of ourselves five years from now. Right. Right. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Or the, or the, or the saying is, would you go back in time with everything you learned right now? You know, would you go back in high school with everything you know right now type of that that situation? I mean, wh what I do, I mean, everything's going to work for someone else. You know, it's just like a diet, you know, some some work for people, some don't for work for people. But what I do, you know, is I like I'm super impatient, bro, like super impatient. And I hate that about myself. And that's and currently working on it and like, you know, establishing something that like I know I can do it. I know I can do it like I just need a chance or I just need to do this or I just, you know, like freaking out and putting all this mental stress on myself and then that way it, it, it shows in my work or it shows in my relationship or it shows at the gym when I shut down and don't talk to people you know I mean my best way that I handle it and it, it sounds crazy but I take my phone throw it on airplane mode I leave it in the car and I just go walk and I don't go walking in town I don't go walking anywhere I find a trail and I just go walk and mm -hmm. think or I sit down and I'll journal for 15 minutes everything that I think I'm doing wrong I want to journal it and then not only do i journal it but i also read that journal so then i remind myself hey not to do this i think i think it's you know i have a, a, a list in my phone of like the things i try to work on per month of like you know no more negativity be patient you know accept what's coming you know roll with the punches and be open to change and i read that every morning and i read that every night and i think you have to do that you have to understand your negatives to improve your positives you can always get better at every aspect of things right but there's things that you know like take photography you know that's that's a skill a god-given skill so you know i can improve on it i can learn i can study from it but it doesn't make sense to me to when my bucket is this big and this full with photography it doesn't make sense to me to overflow it when my patience is the same size bucket but right here mm -hmm. so instead of enhancing my strengths i kind of lean back and I want to enhance my weaknesses. Therefore, hopefully my buckets are even. So my scale isn't like this. And when I feel my scale tipping, I kind of just slowly, you know, almost force myself to add water into here. If you're being patient, you're going to be impatient. Okay, let's do some, let's go do some crazy. You're impatient. Let's go down to the senior hall and play bingo. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's read a book, turn off the TV, take the remote control and hide it. Let's do something that makes me become patient because again, in the uncomfortability, that's where we grow, mm -hmm. you know, but they're definitely manifesting, sitting down for 10, 15, 20 minutes and just listen to your breathing and just understanding like, Hey, I'm in a situation right now. This is not going to be the last one. This is not the first one. Yeah. I've gotten through it. So now we need to pick ourselves up. You know, I'm talking third person, mm -hmm. like I'm from Smeagol or something. You know what I mean? But like, we need to pick ourselves up and we need to do this. Because again, no one's going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And it's just an understanding of you can do it because you've done it before. You know, and there are people that struggle with stuff way worse than me. You know, I mean, my anxiety, you know, I walk into the bar and my anxiety just spikes. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, what are they thinking? What are they talking about? What should I be here? Is my life correct? Like, you know, like, am, am I on the right path? Like, is this the right choice to even walk into a bar? And mm -hmm. I don't even drink. This is great. My mind just doesn't shut off, doesn't shut off, doesn't shut off. So I have to forcibly take the keys out of the ignition and throw everything to the side and just sit and just breathe mm -hmm. and just understand that I will be here again. I've been here before. I've gotten through every test in life, no matter how hard, no matter how long, if they're multiple choice, essay form, whatever it may be. And you understand that every test in life makes you smarter. Some you have answers for, some you don't have answers for. Some are pop quiz, some are open books. Some you can, you know, look on your friends and be like, oh, you fucked up there? Cool, I'm not gonna fuck up there. Yeah. You know, you have to kind of lean back on that person that is you and understand that like, this is, this is how you react to it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's whole, total reactionary. Mm -hmm. You get cut off in traffic, you fuck, 
fly down, fuck this dude, fuck da, 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 da. or you're like, damn, that dude must be struggling more than me. You got to be patient with people, right? Patience, patience, patience with yourself. You're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Now, very, very, very few people get it on the first try. We're talking of the 0.003% of people get it on the first try. But then again, it goes back to the journey. That's where it is. You got to love that grind. You got to understand that grind. So I think it just, you know, whatever they find comfortable doing, if it's they enjoy coffee, throw everything away, enjoy a cup of coffee. You enjoy reading, do that. If you like crystals, you know, I know people that get into the crystals and Neg Chempa and stuff, sit there and do that. Just stop because it's going to be there and it already is there, right? So the only thing we have in time is just stop and just kind of live it, mm -hmm. feel it, understand it. Yeah. And then slowly just start chipping away at it, you know? lean into your senses you know five senses it's like when sometimes when i'm feeling anxious or my mind's racing i'm thinking too much about the future i do like the grounding techniques where it's like all right what are two things right now you can see in the present moment what's three things you could hear right now in the present moment what's a couple of things you can touch right now in the present moment and that's always helped me just think about the here and the now and this is the actual moment it helps take me personally out of the past or thinking too much on the future. And I completely agree with what you're saying, how important that all is. It's like all, we are, all we're guaranteed right now is the moment. While we're talking about patience, I want to use this as a way to segue into the photography you do because yeah. you, <laughs> yeah, because you're extremely talented nature, wildlife photographer. Yeah, thank you. And from the shots that I've seen, it seems like you have to be out pretty much in the weeds for hours to get some of the shots that you get oh, yeah. and how you're like almost stalking these like, different animals and right. insects and just waiting for that perfect moment. How have you practiced patience through your photography and how have you explored some of those struggles through the, you know, the activity of being a photographer? Right. So I think it's easier to have patience when you enjoy doing something that's, you know, I fly fish and that's one of the, the hardest things ever and i you know i know the question about photography but i fly fish and it's uh you gotta be super patient with that you gotta be super patient with photography but when you don't want to be patient that dude let's go like i want an answer i want it now you know what i mean but sometimes that's not what it is you know so i think it's taking this whether i'm walking through a you know a, a disgusting swamp or walking up ten thousand foot mountains or just sitting there watching this bird fly endlessly in fucking circles for 30 minutes being like, dude, are you going to land? Are you going to land? And the second it lands and you get one shot. Yeah, I mean, you get one shot at this thing and it's got to be, you know, everything's got to be perfect. Your focus got to be perfect. Your lighting's got to be perfect. Your background, your depth, your, you know, exposure, everything's got to be perfect. And that, it's in a combination of like all of these things coming into one and then being like, dude, if it wasn't right. So again, you see the end goal. I see this is going to be a dope shot. Like, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Sometimes I'm on my stomach, like looking up like this or on a tripod or to the side or having my buddies hold the back of my backpack and like, you know, trying to get these cool shots and these cool videos and stuff like that. And it's uh, all with patience, but it's all because patience because love. So if you love something, if you truly love something, you're going to be okay waiting for it. Right. And there's so many times that I've went out there and been like, oh, this is October. There's tarantulas crossing the road and that'd be a dope shot. And I walk, I go out there and I promise her here. I promise her. And there's like one spider. And I'm like, dude, I wanted a shot with like one in focus and then like eight of it behind it. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, you know, coming at me type of thing like that. And it takes a lot, dude. It, it takes it's a toll. Like you guys said, setting this up and sitting in here and sweating and all that. Like it's a fucking toll, dude, because like you have this vision, like you have this vision that like, dude, this is going to be sick. Like, you know, I'm sure it's like what Michelangelo thought, you know, he's painting upside down. And he's like, dude, it's going to be so dope like this and that. And then like you take the photos and you get back and you're like, dude, that wasn't <laughs> it at all. You know what I mean? You're like, you know, it's like, why couldn't I just take it with my eyes and be like, boom, that's what demonstrates it, you know, or like you get to certain spots and, you know, we, again, we talk about the Sonora, you know, the National Geographic spots and all this and all that. And it's like, dude, this is so epic. You know what I mean? Like, this is so like perfect and it just doesn't compute. It doesn't translate because you're not living in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost more special being there in the moment and translating it and stuff like that than trying to put it onto a digital print or a black and white, you know, 35 millimeter, whatever it may be, like it just doesn't do it justice. Right. And so, 
you know, with the patients, I've also learned to be like, you know, I do understand that I'm there to get a specific shot of something, but if I don't get it, then that's okay because I'm here to experience it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's with everything I've been through, you know, helps me realize that like, like it's okay if it doesn't turn out, mm -hmm. right? Like I have, I have a, I have a photo of like, uh, we were over on the east side of the Sierra Nevadas and that's uh, a Bodie National Park or Bodie State Park. And um, it's an old mining town. They mined uranium and silver. And, you know, back in the day, 50,000 people, women of the night, Levi Strauss, you know, uh, trains rolling through there, all that stuff. You know, it was the first 24-hour town, like, you know, with a gold rush kind of hit before they had to go up the Sierra Nevadas. And I have this picture, and, you know, I'm just driving through there and there's a, a picture of a herd of like 5,000 sheep. And then there's two farmers in the back and they're like probably Hispanic farmers. But back in the day, they would have Bosque people, you know, Argentinian farmers back in the day. And it was just super cool how like it had the road and you can see the road go through up into the abyss, which is like, you know, the, the high desert. And then just these sheep right here and these two sheep and it's all in black and white. And I feel so strong about black and white these days. It's it's such a lost art. It, and you know, talk about patience, dude. You're in that you're in that dark room and you're shading and you're editing and you're having to do all this perfect timing. Does it work good on five seconds or is it better on six seconds? Or how do I do that? How do I edge this in? How do I do that? And it's like one of my favorite photos, and I show that to people. And you know, only few, only dude, only a handful of people are like, that's dope. Other people are like, oh, but that one you took at Yosemite Falls in color is so sick. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, everyone can do that, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's it, it's it's hard because the game is so changed now with photos, right? You can go on Google and rip a photo off and there's no money in it. And so it really is a hobby. And But it's uh, when you're, you know, to tie it all in, like the, the patience is that like you have to be okay with, you know, struggling through these hikes walking through this in the heat sitting down there waiting for one shot one shot is all you need dude it's like you know you're sitting there trying to get like a, a gopher snake or something you know and you're sitting there the whole time and you're like come on come on come on come on and like you go like this and then boom he does it and you're like you know what i mean so it's like you just gotta again roll with the punches man mm -hmm. like it's it's and if it doesn't turn out it's gonna be okay mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be another time you know you don't have to force something because when you force something you lose your creativity you lose your art you lose your love of the game mm -hmm. whatever game it may be you're playing and it's just you gotta be okay like it it's gonna be okay yeah. you know seems like you've got your system down pretty well because you just got some awards recently correct <laughs> yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah <laughs> yeah what was that for uh so that was uh the c cert uh like a central central sierra nevada environmental like organization they had a photo contest and i wasn't going to enter at all you know i was just uh, on the phone and walking through the bagel bin uh, getting a bagel and i was actually talking to uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time and she was like i was like oh look at this a photo contest Contest and she's like, why don't you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. It just seems like so fake. You know, so many people can add saturation and, and do this and do that. And like, it's just so digitalized, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't, I'm not going to win, like whatever. And she's like, no, seriously, like you need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And after like, you know, four minutes of, you know, me trying to say no and kind of flirt and all that. And she's like, dude, just do it. Yeah. Like, you're good. Like, trust it's me. Like, you're good. Eric, shut up. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, well, if I win, can I take you out to dinner? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, what's up? Like, you know, how do I get incentive? She's like, no, but enter. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I entered and uh, it was like due on like, dude, I don't know, the 20th. So I was actually down in Santa Cruz with uh, my cousin Andy that mm -hmm. you guys know, and I'm sitting there on his couch, and it's like the 19th at like 7 p.m., and I'm like, fuck, I had something to do today, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, f the photos, and so like, I went through my phone, and I was like, boom, 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 I found like, because it had to be, so Sierra Nevada's had to be close from like Sequoia's Kings Canyon up to like Tahoe, right? And from like, I guess you could do Oakdale because they're like Valley Elder Beetles up here all the way to like right where the top of the pass is. So you have a small section. So it's like, I take photos wherever I go. And so it's like, what orient to here? Obviously, Yosemite is home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's backyard. Then we also have the east side of Sierra Nevada. Very good, but very hard to photograph. You know, yeah. very, very, you have your white base. Not white, but it's, you know, it's sand color. And then it kind of with a bright sky, not too many clouds. 
And so if you don't know what you're doing, that contrast is going to be super bright and you're going to lose what you're focusing on. Wildflowers, it's kind of ugly, you know, mm -hmm. growing up, I was like, you know, this, like there's nothing out here. And then the older I got, I'm like, oh, dude, there's super bloom. Like there's flowers here. There's hot springs here. Like the nighttime photos. Like, and so uh, I sent like 20 photos to her, dude. And she was like, yeah, these are amazing, but we only need 10. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I'm so lazy. You know what I mean? I'm so like, I almost like didn't want to enter. I was like. I was like, well, can I just number them like one, two, three, four, you know, all 20? Can I just say the numbers I want? And she's like, I guess. And it's like eight o'clock. Right. Uh -huh. So I'm like four hours from the deadline. She's yeah. like, yeah, that's fine. So I just went like, you know, one, three, seven, eight, nine, uh, you know, pick 10 of them off. She was like, oh, cool. Thank you. And I was like, cool. And then I was going up to uh, help my old professor open up uh, a Baker station, which is like an outdoor campus, but mm -hmm. up in like right before Kennedy Meadows on the pass. So it sits there. It's an old Caltrans station. They have a couple bunks, a big school hall. And they their aspect is like get out and physically examine what a book can't show you. So you can learn a lot from books, right? I'm not, I'm not advocating for books, but what they're saying is like, you know, why would I learn about a pine tree when I can literally physically go to it, or mm -hmm. when how do I learn about fish breeding habitats when they're there or helgramites or mushrooms or wild whatever it may be and I'm driving up there and I'm like oh and check my emails and then all I see is congratulations and I was like I was like what and I looked at it and I'll congratulations Eric you're uh, up close of your jumping spider one first place mm -hmm. and as I'm like reading it and like and then another email boom and like it the, the thread just keeps going and she's like congratulations you won second place and I'm like what it's pretty awesome and it was like man. first and second place yeah. and they're like, oh, well, where's your, uh, where, you know, what's your address so we can send you the, you know, prize money and stuff like that. And then when I got the prize money, I guess over 500 photos have been submitted. And so it went from 500 down to 200 down to 20 from the top. So she says, like, congratulations. We can't wait for next year. Here's you know, your money, all this. And then uh, I just want to let you know that six of your photos were in the top 20. Wow. And wow. She, she's all that. She's all, yeah, you had six of the top photos. And she's all, we couldn't give you first, second, and third place. Uh -huh. So we gave you first and second. Wow. But yeah, so six out of the top 20 out of 500. So six out of 500 were in the top wow, 20 man. photos. Wow. How, how did that, so, I, I know you're not in the photography for external validation. Yeah. But how did it feel to get that feedback, that response? Dude let's go yeah you know what i mean like yeah i was just like i read it and like i was like i read it and i read it again and i was like my ex is right again dude, I'm like, dude i gotta call her and admit it you know and so i you know there's no bad blood between her and I, but i was like dude the first person to actually like push me you know i show people you know drunk at the bar look at this photo look at this photo like you know it fucking pisses me off dude because mm -hmm. like you know, no offense to the girls that are doing the game out there, but if I had a bikini and well-rounded female, I'd get 500 <laughs> likes per post too. But, uh -huh. you know, I get it up close of a, of a jumping spider and you can see four eyes, you can see the reflection and it's like 170. And I'm like, dude, like how, like, what, you know what I mean? Like, where is it? It just confuses me. Like the validation, not that I'm seeking it, but it's also like, dude, this whole Instagram is so fucked up and like yeah. everything is up. Like this is someone literally posing just like this or like, dude, yeah. that's like thousands. Like I'm like, what right. the fuck? Insta famous. Like, if I did that, I'd be I'm like, Megas are some weird. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this is like, but it just made me feel that like, dude, I might have something mm -hmm. here. Like I might have something here. And now it's like, you know, I, I met a gentleman up at the Baker Station. And he's like, oh, I entered the contest, and I'm like, I just got the confirmation on my way up there, and I got, and it was like kind of in it like but it like also made me realize that like all the change i'm doing all this and all that and i'm like oh did you i'm like i'm like i entered too like have you heard anything back and i was like how do i go from like the old eric being like yeah what's up i won to being like yeah you know yeah like well yeah i heard something back dude and he's mm -hmm. like oh yeah what and i'm like you know i looked at him and i was like dude i I don't really don't know how to say it. Like, you know, I, I, I took first and second and he's like, for real? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dude. And he's like, oh, and you could see like his skeptical hippo eyes. He's like, for real? I'm like, yeah. And like, I showed him the photos and he was just like, yeah, you took first and second. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, I love that. And, and his photo was cool too. His photo was a, a saddleback mushroom and it kind of grows up. Like it has your normal stock like a mushroom, but it looks as almost like a, a, a melted candle, mm -hmm. but not as if it beaded, not the beads of the wax, mm -hmm. but if it just kind of melted, kind of, I guess like a baloney, right? Like a baloney, like, like that, like it just comes up and grows like that. And what he did, he had a, a DSLR and then he had the, the 100, 100X uh, macro lens. And what he did is that he had put 
if this was the, if this was it, he put light from this way so you can see the translucent of the mushrooms. You can see the veins and the spores and everything like that. And then he took uh, or a blue light or red light activated red, mm -hmm. I think is what it is. And he painted it like he just brushed it on there. So whatever wrinkle or foil was up, like it would hit this, but it wouldn't hit this, right? So, and then he put a blue light on top of it so it would glow. And then he took a photo from that angle. I mean, it was dope, That's pretty right? Cool. It was super dope. But yeah. in my mind, I'm like, dude, that's sick. Like I would hang that in my room. Like uh, that's like, I love that. But at the same time, I'm like, well, that's not what we're doing here, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is like, you know, like I, I appreciate the skill. I understand the skill, but like, you just like added like lights and, and dyes and neons into it. And it's like, this is, should have been like the real raw form of yeah, animals. You know? I didn't think my bristle cone pine forest, I took one with my camera and it's a, the Methuselah tree, the world's oldest tree. And I kind of took it. It's got the Milky Way in the background. And I didn't think that was gonna win at all. I like threw that in there because everyone's like, oh, that's sick, that's sick, that's sick. And that one's cool. Like two, three years ago, I took that, you know what I mean? And I'm like, whatever. But there were other ones that were like red tail hawks or like bird's eyes and like, you know, all these different kind of wildlife photos that were like up close and personal, kind of like personal with me because it's like, dude, this is what I, again, that's what I was doing with the kid and throwing the backpack at the door and I'm yeah. fucking out in the wilderness. Yeah. You know, that's what it was. And so now it's like, it's cool because now I can truly be like a big ass kid, but with which is like a dope photo on a platform now. Totally. You know? So it's like yeah. I can still like do fun, cool, and do these crazy hikes, but now I'm also out there like being like, dude, this would be cool. But so it's a huge accomplishment, yeah. man. I hope you're proud of yourself because I mean I remember you've showed me your work around the time when we first met, close to a year ago now, and. I was like, dude, did you? I don't think you even realize how talented you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, right. no, I'm glad you're finally getting the recognition you deserve. And I hope Thank that you, propels yeah. you forward to keep submitting, keep putting your work out there, keep promoting yourself too in that regards, because I think that's huge. Right. Where can people see your work? I have the, the, the Instagram and it's... Uh... I think it's uh, the underscore road underscore warrior 16 and it's right there and I'm, I'm really bad about posting dude like you know what I mean like I'm super bad but now I need to get in to the game more after this like you know because again you know like we talked about I, I, I would take photos and you know people are like dude that's crazy like you were there and I'm like yeah and they're like dude that's really good mm -hmm. and I'm like cool like you know and most of the time they come in drunk bar conversations so I'm like whatever dude you know what I mean like that's you know thank you but uh you know now I just realized that I got it I got dude I just got to push myself again mm -hmm. like the whole thing dude without yeah. without uncomfortability there is no growth yeah. and so it's like gonna be it's gonna be uncomfortable and it it kind of it just kind of I guess it kind of sucks because it's also like you know I think it should get more likes or i think it should get more share or like this or that but it's like you know their validation it, yeah. i did what made me happy mm -hmm. and this is what i think is good and so it sucks that you know the consumers who we kind of ultimately bow down to and kind of you know mm -hmm. but i don't do it for them like if something's sick like i'll literally travel in my truck and sleep in my truck for 13 hours to go get one shot, mm -hmm. the one photo, and I'll look at the weather, I'll make sure it's right. Like I'll drive to Northern Arizona and go to Sedona because I thought something was cool. And so it's like, I have to realize that no one's there helping me driving, no one's paying my gas, no one's paying the insurance, no one's taking a photo, no one's there. So I, you know, I need to rely on myself and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I think we kind of already touched on how all the whole Instagram thread and algorithms kind of mm -hmm. skewed and stuff like that, yeah. but yeah. Definitely. We'll get. I, I want to get into social media even more next time. And yeah. Just our opinions on how it's impacting society and oh, yeah. people's day to day lives, relationships, all the above. But appreciate you coming on, man. Taking the time. <laughs> uh, I think our listeners are really going to eat this up. All the stuff you talked about, because a lot of the stuff you talked about, it's very applicable for people who are willing to take that step and actually apply a lot of the stuff that you mentioned. So, right. Thank you for the insight on all that. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. All righty. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, check us out at scalingcreator.com. Join our free Discord community, and we will see you on the next episode.